our title today is the mole. The is in a dozen? Twelve. How do you know that? Well, you just know it because it's something that probably you've known for as long, for as, long as you can remember. So there's twelve in a dozen. Things don't naturally come in groups of twelve. This is a human-made construction, a dozen, for convenience, I guess, from a long time ago. Okay, so we can have a dozen eggs, a dozen donuts, a dozen bagels, and we know that a dozen always means 12. I'm not talking about a baker's dozen. I'm talking about a dozen. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we're counting. We can have a dozen anything. Now, we don't generally say, well, we've got a dozen people. But we could, and we would know that that would mean 12. All right. So today, we are going to talk about that same kind of quantity, like a dozen or a pair that is a, a known quantity and it's used for counting things to tell us how many of something we have. And that quantity is a mole. How much is a mole? How many pieces are in a mole? A pair is two, a dozen is twelve, how much is a mole? A mole and we abbreviate it, wow, um, represents Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. Get that, people. That's this number, comma. Expand the scientific notation. Twenty one zeros, comma. It's two. Okay, that's a lot. Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third pieces of something. That's a mole of something. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. Okay, we also refer to this number as being Avogadro's number. This number is also known as Avogadro's number. After the Italian chemist physicist Amadeus Avogadro. Okay. Um, now, that's a lot of something. Are there that many people on earth? We can't even count that many. We can't count people with that number. I don't even know that that many people have ever lived on earth for the entire history of earth. Maybe, but that's a huge number. 
So why do we use this kind of number, this massive number in chemistry? Because when we are talking about atoms or molecules, they are so very, very tiny that if we want to talk about a quantity of them that we can actually hold, we've got to talk in these kinds of terms. Okay, a lot of them. Okay, so because atoms and molecules are so very small, we need to have a number that represents a lot of them that we could hold, measure. All right. Um, now, this in this jar, and I will have this in class for you tomorrow so that you can see it for yourself. <clears throat> this contains a mole of carbon. Mole of carbon atoms right here. How do I know that this is a mole of carbon atoms? Did I count every single one of these atoms? No, I did not count every single one of these atoms. So think about this. How do I know that this is a mole? How do I know that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in this jar right here. Okay, the one thing that I do want to write down that I didn't write down yet is what are the sorts of things that we count in moles? We usually refer to quantities of quantities of atoms and molecules are often represents the molar mass. For that element. Hi, Ms. Boss. Yes. Can I have a kid in the back of the room? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, I'm not talking to myself, okay? <laughs> you know, the prompt is explain um, the properties of water. All the characteristics of water. All the way back, okay. Okay, so if we look at a periodic table,
is 14.01 grams per mole. So this can be a little bit confusing because this number, this atomic mass number, actually represents two things depending upon what unit you're looking at. If we say, well, this is 19 AMU, atomic mass units, what this is going to tell us is um, how many protons and neutrons are in the nucleus according to AMU. But if our unit is in grams, this tells us as well how many grams one mole of atoms of that element weighs. Okay, very confusing. Now, where did this number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd come from? I mean, what a random number that is. Well, it's a constructed number, like a dozen is a constructed number. Okay, humans made it up for convenience. Okay, and so this is what they did. They took 12 grams of the isotope of carbon, carbon-12. So they took exactly 12 grams of carbon-12 and they counted the number of atoms that are in 12 grams of carbon-12. And they came up with this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so that's where this idea of this quantity of the mole came from. It is not a natural physical phenomenon of mole. It's what humans decided they were going to do to make this quantity convenient. Okay, so enough of all the background. Basically, you guys, what you need to know at this point is that this number can represent two things, the atomic mass unit, how many protons and neutrons. Um, and if we're, if we're using our unit as grams, it also represents the molar mass for that particular element. So molar mass for carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. One mole of carbon is 12.01 grams. That's how I know that this is a mole of carbon. Oxygen, 16.00 grams per mole. All right, let's do some problems. You're going to need to have out a calculator. So we say that carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Okay, that is the molar mass for carbon. Oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole, meaning that every mole, if one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. All right, so we've got two conversion factors that we can use in dimensional analysis. We have the number of atoms per mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The number of molecules per mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we also now have this new conversion factor, which is the grams per mole. So let's do some problems. Calculate the number of molecules. In 0 0.350 moles of C6H12O6, which is glucose. And yeah, let's just start with this. All right, what are we given? 
five zero moles. And so that's what we're going to start with. Okay, this is all brand new for you. All brand new. All what I'm going to do here in terms of dimensional analysis. So you could very well be having a difficult time with what I'm going to do here, but we will practice and practice and practice. Okay, so we've got 0 0.350 moles, 0 0.350 moles, let's put the zero in front of it, of C6H12O6. And I'm going to put that over one. Okay, now what am I trying to get to? I am trying to get to molecules, molecules. Now, the question is, I need a conversion factor that's going to take me from moles to molecules. What is that conversion factor going to be? That's going to be Avogadro's number. There are 6.02 molecules of anything. Oh, wrong. Times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules of anything, people. Doesn't matter what it is. Per mole. What else could this numerator say? It could also say atoms per mole. Okay? This is our conversion factor. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of glucose for every mole of glucose. Okay. My moles cancel and I have molecules of glucose in my numerator. There it is. I'm done. So we're going to say 0 0.350 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We will work on putting scientific notation into your calculator tomorrow in class. Um, but give it a try. See what answer you get. You should get an answer. Well, of course, I don't know how it worked out here. Because in the past, I have depended on you to get the answer. So we have got 0.35 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that gives me an answer of 2. Point, and what are my sig figs here? 3? 2.11 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of Okay. Now, what if I want to add a little bit to this problem? <clears throat> what if I want to say how many hydrogen atoms are there in 0 0.350 moles of glucose? How many hydrogen atoms? in 0 0.350 moles of C6H12O6. Okay, what are we going to do with that beast? Okay, we're going to start this thing exactly the way we started it up above. So we're going to say there's 0 0.350 moles, and at this point, well, no, C6 H12O6 and I know that for every one mole and I don't have to write the one here so I'm going to get rid of it of C6 H12O6 I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of C6H12O6. So 
my moles will cancel. But I'm not looking for molecules. I'm looking for hydrogen atoms. I know I need to cancel molecules. So let's just put it in the denominator and see if we can't analyze our way out of this problem. So for every one molecule of C6H12O6, what am I looking for? Atoms of hydrogen How many atoms of hydrogen do I have in one molecule of glucose? I have 12. So says my chemical formula. 12. My molecules cancel. And there's my answer. Well, so let's see. I'm going to take this answer right here. 2.11 times 10 to the 23rd times 23. So I have 2.53. Let's do one more. Let's throw a different twist into this thing so that we can use yet another new conversion factor. So we've got molecules or atoms per mole. We've got numbers of atoms per molecule that we've used. And now let's throw some grams in there too. How many sulfur atoms? Sixteen point three grams of sulfur. All right, I'm going to start with what I'm given, which is sixteen point three grams of sulfur. Sixteen point three grams of sulfur over one. Eventually, I want to get to atoms number of atoms. So I know that eventually I can use this conversion factor. There are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. But I don't have moles here anywhere. So I need to go from grams to moles. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use the molar mass of sulfur. So where do I find the molar mass of sulfur? I go to my periodic table and I look up sulfur. And uh, there it is, atomic number 16, and the molar mass for sulfur is 32.07. 32 32.07 grams of sulfur per mole of sulfur. Why did I put the grams of sulfur in the denominator? Because I need to cancel it with the grams of sulfur in the numerator. Okay, and the number always goes with the grams. <clears throat> because it's not 32.07 moles of sulfur per gram. It's the other way around. 32.07 grams 
of sulfur for every mole. Okay, or a mole of sulfur weighs, a mole of sulfur atoms weigh 32.07 grams. All right, so good. My grams of sulfur cancel. Now I do have something. I know conversion factor that's going to take me from moles of sulfur to atoms. And what is that thing? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur per mole of sulfur, because that's how much a mole is, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, my moles cancel, and of course, I don't have an answer here, so let's do it. 16.3 divided by 32.07 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that gives me an answer of 3. Here's my sig figs. 3.06 You guys, was it 10 to the 24th, 10 to the 23rd? 16.3. This calculator is having a terrible time. Thank you. 